everybody. Um, so I think uh, we, um, when we were preparing for our talk today, we thought uh, maybe it was more like just talk about something interesting and maybe get a discussion going. So I, this was great to hear all these great talks about um, various projects people are doing. The Center for Democracy and Technology is doing a number of great projects, but um, I don't have any beautiful handouts or graphic novels about them. So instead, I thought um, one thing that's been really interesting for us in our presence in, in Europe right now is uh, the GDPR's concepts around explainability. Um, for those of you who are in the first session this morning on big data, I thought the question and answer session led to a lot of really interesting ideas and conversation. Um, so I thought I would share a couple of thoughts from my perspective uh, as someone from the United States, and then maybe hopefully we could talk as a group if people are interested, and if not, we can go early and have more coffee, um, whatever people prefer. Um, I just saw a really interesting quote uh, from a professor named Barry O'Sullivan, who's in the computer science department at the University College in Cork, um, who said that, uh, he says, for me, the true hallmark of intelligence is the ability to explain. There are a lot of tasks that can be automated by a technology that can do the job very well, but it doesn't really understand what it's doing or doesn't understand why it did something in a particular setting. This is really interesting to me. I saw that um, we just automated poker. Poker can now be played by artificial intelligence, including bluffing, which is really fascinating. Um, it's interesting because I'm not entirely certain that people understand why they did what they did in a particular setting. Um, and if you asked for an explanation from someone, if I say, why did you take a picture of this? Why did you write that down and not this <coughs> other thing? You'll have an answer. You'll be able to explain the decision but I'm not confident that that explanation existed before I asked you, right? It's sort of something that you came up with then once you were asked to come up with it. And that kind of rationalizing behavior, I'm curious if what we're doing is, is forcing it onto technology and trying to build the same accountability we expect from each other from this artificial system rather than sort of thinking broadly about what accountability might work best for this new technology that operates a bit differently than a person so far. Um, but we're sort of making it more like a person. So in the US, uh, there's explainability is a really popular theme for any kind of best practices documents um, or any sort of um, kind of arguments around how we should manage algorithmic fairness. So the US Association of Computing Machinery just released an ethics statement and principles, seven principles. One of them is explainability, which about which they say, um, systems and institutions that use algorithmic decision making are encouraged to provide explanations regarding both the procedures followed by the algorithm and the specific decisions that are made. This is particularly important in a public policy context. So that's one kind of perspective. Um, and then a woman named Kathy O'Neill, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with, who recently published Weapons of Math Destruction, has an argument around sort of transparency that uh, relates to explainability which is that you should feel comfortable telling people your criteria for a decision, your logic for a decision, if those criteria are robust. Um, her argument was made in the context of teacher evaluations, when they were saying we can't tell the teachers what the evaluation is based on or they will game the system. Um, Kathy's argument, which makes a lot of sense, is that if your system can be gamed, it's not a very good system. Uh, <coughs> the reason that we can tell people generally what constitutes the factors that make up your credit score, for example, is because those factors are incredibly robust predictors for your credit worthiness. So if you carry a low debt, if you pay your payments on time, and if you have had a long history of credit, you are in fact a better credit risk. So in that context, to game the system means to be a better credit risk, which is the outcome they're trying to get at anyway. So it makes perfect sense to share them. If you apply the same logic to policing, what should be true, is that the criteria used to predict who's going to commit a crime should be things that make you disinclined to commit a crime. So telling people what these things are, if they game the system, should mean there's less crime. Everybody wins. Um, but obviously this concept of gaming and proprietary information is a, is a barrier to that. So um, one last point of view on sort of explainability from, from, from my perspective is, you know, at, at CDT when we were thinking about this, we, we agreed with the sentiment of the computing machinery concept, but we felt that um, it could be used a bit more abstractly, which is to say, if you 
if, if you as a company or you as an institution who is using predictive anything, predictive analytics or automated decision making, have to answer to yourself how, um, how much you can explain about what you've done, it gives you the opportunity to understand the weaknesses of your own system. And if you have to make that public, then it gives other people the opportunity to evaluate how they want to use your technology. So it could be a system where you say, listen, we use, we use um, PredPol. It turns out PredPol is like 95% garbage, 5% useful. Um, then if you know that about it, you don't have to stop using it necessarily or demand an explanation, but it will definitely lower your credibility to try and use it to make a high quality decision as opposed to if you could say, the data that goes into here is really robust. We've checked it against these standards, and therefore we know that it's it's pretty explainable, the results, um, and now you can use it for more things. So we thought of explainability more as a criteria rather than a barrier. Um, I don't think I'm explaining that quite right. Um, in any case, this morning's conversation seemed to center around whether or not ex explainability and explanation um, was a sufficient transparency measure. and. Uh, it seems like folks had sort of differing views on that. I don't remember um, where it left off, but if anybody is interested in talking about explainability at all, um, we could, or we could be done, because I think I'm last. Yeah, so. Any points of view on GDPR? Do you have to comment on something previous? Okay, no problem. No conversation. Right, thanks.